In the world of subscription-based programs, lack of physical media, and the overwhelming value of basic software, it can be both daunting and expensive to find the software you need for your new PC. So, using Soul of the Internet, I've condensed down some of the best free games, software, and operating systems to suit any kind of person. Now firstly, do feel free to skip ahead to whatever part of the video you're interested in by going to the timestamps marked clearly on the left hand side. All the links will be down in the description below. So firstly, once you've got your PC, you're going to need an operating system. Well luckily the most major operating system around right now is Windows 10, and it's available free directly from their own website. It does come with a few limitations, but ultimately you can get away with doing whatever you like with it. It supports all the latest APIs and can run on basically any system that's newer than a Pentium D. You can still change your wallpaper by right clicking on a file, contrary to popular belief that you can't do this, I don't know who started spreading that, but it's not true. And if you do want to upgrade to a premium and licensed copy, the key's around 3 to £4 pounds online and the same as that in dollars. One of the main followers up to this was Elementary OS, which is arguably one of my favourite versions of the Linux thanks to its lightweight nature and pleasant aesthetics. It's easier to run than Windows 10 and does support a wide host of programs due to its natively growing support. It's also free and open source, so definitely worth a go if you want to try things out on the Linux side. Finally, if anyone using an older PC or a retro PC that still wants to run some of those older Windows games and have some support for some programs, we have Windows 98 and ME, which are both available free from winworld.com. Microsoft Windows ME's later releases were actually very stable and Windows 98 is often regarded as the true Windows 9X experience. But either way it's your choice, would you rather have the newer features or the true experience? Both run quite smooth and an alternative to these would be Microsoft Whistler, which is available as a beta from winworld.com as Windows XP isn't actually abandoned where just yet. It does work quite well and there's ways around to get around the time limit, so I definitely recommend it there as it does work with quite a few Windows XP programs. But personally I'd stick with a finished OS if you do plan on going online. Following this up though, the thing that you've actually probably been waiting for on this video. Once you've got an OS on your PC and you want to play some games, but after spending all that hard earned money on your PC you might not even have the money for those games. Now all of these games have been tested on Windows 10, however most of them will work on Windows 7 as that is generally kind of the consensus behind them. The DirectX 12 games will require Windows 10, however the majority of the ones will work on anything before this. Wine on Linux may allow you to run a few of these games as I've had a good experience with it in the past and Elementary OS is based around this idea. So to start things off with we have Halo 5 which requires Windows 10 and is available free from the store. We have the minimum requirements along the bottom so that you can see what you need to actually run this game. But damn is this a good one. With online Slayer matches it's actually very similar to a more up to date and fast paced Halo Combat Evolved. As a host of features and settings meaning that anyone can actually get into running with a playable frame rate and you can also get to enjoy a complete set of forged tools to create your own maps and share them with other players. There is no single player campaign but I have definitely lost a good few hours picking up an online match and playing around with a few people that I meet. Sure it's no Master Chief collection but for free I'm not one to argue. Secondly after this we have another game which is available for free with the same scope of another AAA game with Forza 6 Apex. It's about as optimised as the aforementioned Halo 5 and is definitely a fun little game with a large portion of the cars, tracks and the actual gameplay from the Forza 6 game on the Xbox One. It's extremely well optimised as mentioned and has got very good reviews due to it essentially being Forza 6 scaled down and just given away for free. It's more than just a demo because it's not just a couple of tracks, it's the complete game. And due to this, I'm really just going to recommend it. You've got an amazing graphical options menu. You've literally got everything you could want in a game given away for free. Definitely recommended. But those games are arguably one of the harder games to run here. So I decided to test out an amazing game with Battlefield 2, which also comes with Battlefield 2142 in case you want to play that instead. I mean it is definitely freely available through the Revive player and it is very popular online today. You are only required to make an account and what can I say, being thrown straight into a 64 player conquest match all at the push of a button certainly is something amazing for a free to play game. I played this game for far too long while just even trying to get this footage as it's very immersive when you're there, there's gunshots going over your head, you're crouched down with only a medic next to you. Sure it isn't the prettiest game anymore but damn does it work well. It scales to any resolution and is a fun FPS game to play to this day. 
Now, if you've been following this channel for a while, you'll probably have guessed that I like strategy games like RimWorld and city builders like SimCity 2000, which I know is old, but it will run fine on just about anything. It's fun and available for free to download from the internet. It's a ton of fun, has an amazing soundtrack, and in many ways just has so much charm that I'd recommend it over the modern city builder games. It makes for a great time sink, and although old, this game is definitely gold. Warframe is one of those games that I've tried before and have recently re-downloaded again today. It has recently received a massive update, and when I asked someone why they still enjoyed it, the answer was, it's free. But besides that and getting back to reality, the game is extremely well optimised, has a ton of features, and some great gunplay and melee combat. Pairing this with the absolutely gorgeous graphics and the fact that it's available for download for free via Steam, I can see why this game is still extremely popular in the action genre. And finally, to round off my selection, we have Fortnite, which is essentially Player Unknown's Battlegrounds is one of the most popular free-to-play games at the moment. With more low-end friendly system requirements, it's quite appealing to those of you that have just built a PC, and the cartoon aesthetic works well. It does have a nice building system in place, which I didn't use too much, and I don't think many people do use too much, and it's altogether quite a fun game. Considering I had no idea how to play it, I picked it straight up from the moment I started playing it, and it's available free through their launcher. It doesn't appear to be very play to win at the moment, and is definitely a nice change considering the genre. Let's move away from games for a second and talk about the topic of screen capture, as if you can play these games, surely you want to be able to record your gameplay, and currently my favourite screen capture tool is Loilo Game Recorder, which scales amazingly well with hardware, can capture a host of games, it's lightweight, simple to use, and is an awfully powerful tool. But ultimately, my main issue with it is that you're limited to time 264 encoding from the processor, meaning no hardware acceleration. Now, this is where my second mention comes in with OBS, which is an even more powerful tool, but also requires a lot more of an in-depth setup. It takes a little while to get used to, but once you are used to it, you can use AMD VCE, NVIDIA NVENC, and Intel QuickSync meaning that you get virtually no performance loss in games while you record your gameplay. It's also capable of streaming, but you really won't want to use these due to needing a higher bitrate to maintain the same quality as x264 encoding. Still, most modern APUs, GPUs and iGPUs can actually take advantage of this, which may be very helpful in these circumstances. An honourable mention would of course have to go to XSplit, which is very simple to use and works even better than Loy Low but you are limited to 720p recordings unless you buy a license. So let's say you finally get all your clips together and now you need to edit them. Well here we have Kden Live, which I've used for a little bit myself. And well, it's very nice for what it is. It's a simple, free, easy to use editor. And although it's not as proficient as Serif Movie Plus or Sony Vegas in terms of features, it's free and runs well on most PCs. And more importantly, will work well with Windows, Linux, or Mac OS X, making it perfect for as much diversity in your Minecraft Let's Play community which is why I'm sure all of you guys are here, because if not, I've made the wrong video. But seriously, no matter what content you're making, with enough effort, you'll definitely be able to make this stuff really quite nice. Although we know it's ludicrously hard to even begin to contemplate how you'd pirate Vegas or Final Cut, so I reckon this is going to be your best bet. Or, you know, wait for a Steam sale where Vegas goes down to, like, £8. There are other three editors out there, like HitFilm, which we limited to 720p, but it is a very good editor that was recommended to me over on Discord, so that's also recommended. For just clipping parts together, I'd suggest grabbing a copy of Movie Maker Live from the Microsoft website, which should still work and can output all the way up to 1080p and 60fps. And finally, nearing the end of the video, we have the miscellaneous software that I like to use. So for the likes of temperature checking software, I would recommend Open Hardware Monitor. It's lightweight, you don't need to install it, and it even lets you control your PC fans, so that you can set them all to 100% and question your life for even doing this. No doubt this goes hand in hand with benchmarking, for which I recommend the 3D Mark demos from Steam, which allows to run a host of tests and will record your scores for comparison online. For overclocking, I'd like to recommend MSI Afterburner, as it has a host of features that allow you to increase the power limits, extend the clock limits, or while keeping tabs of your temperatures, and if you have an AMD card, then I can vouch for AMD Wattman, which comes with your drivers. But for the vast majority of the people that don't have access to Wattman, I can say use MSI Afterburner, as it's the quick and easy way to go. For minor software and little pieces, I recommend Discord for talking to people, as well as CPU and GPU-Z for finding out in-depth information about your hardware. I'd also like to recommend DXDiac, which comes built in with Windows, as it's way more than enough to find out what's actually in your system, and it just comes there built in with Windows. 
7-zip is great for opening and compressing programs, and Roof is a great way to go for putting operating systems onto a memory stick, as once again it is lightweight and will work without an install. VLC for media playback is very good and it can also convert your files. However, I'd suggest using something a little bit more advanced like Handbrake as you can convert batches of files with more control. Fraps is great for monitoring your frame times and Paint.net or GIMP are both free imaging editing softwares which you may need if you like to make images or edit images. And finally my last recommendation is Audacity for audio work which is what I use all the time. So I hope this video has been useful to you and that you've found some programs that you may like to use, as well as the games you want to play once you've got an operating system which was also included in this video. Thank you very much for watching, Good night. So I thought this video could help out some of you as I'm always being asked about software. You can always catch me over on the Discord, download the programs from the link in the description, like and subscribe for more and I'll catch you guys in another video.